Today on Zoo Clues, we're gonna explore what the Americas looked like a million years ago, long before humans, and meet the incredible animals that lived there, including the biggest predator that ever lived in the Americas after the dinosaurs, and the colossal ancestors of armadillos, sloths, bears, cats, beavers, and even elephants. It's all coming up now on Zoo Clues. The adventure starts here and leads us into the wild. And everywhere else animals live, we'll ask questions and discover the answers. Let the investigation begin. This is Zoo Clues. Millions of years ago, during a cycle of ice ages, a land bridge connected Asia to North America. And for millions of years, animals crossed over. But it wasn't until about 15,000 years ago that humans made the journey. What they found was a world of animals almost entirely different from those in Asia. And while some of those animals were hunted to extinction or died when the climate warmed and the ice melted, some are still here. But what's most amazing about the animals of the Pleistocene era, which lasted from about 3 million years ago to 10,000 years ago, is their incredible size. For thousands of years, the African elephant has been the largest land mammal. But 12,000 years ago and earlier, the Colombian mammoth claimed that title. Its remains have been discovered at the La Brea Tar Pits in the center of Los Angeles, and in Washington State, Nebraska, Texas, and Mexico. Scientists believe it ate up to 700 pounds of fruits and other vegetation each day, over twice as much as an African elephant eats, and its tusks could grow to 14 feet long. So let's find out. How tall was the Colombian mammoth? 8 feet, 10 feet, 13 feet, or 18 feet? Here's your clue. The African bush elephant, the world's largest elephant species, can reach as high as 13 feet at the shoulder. And the Colombian mammoth's closest living relatives are elephants. But the Colombian mammoth's extreme size and huge appetite weren't just the result of its height, which was about 13 feet. The right answer. Its size had more to do with its incredible weight of 8 tons. That's nearly 18,000 pounds, or as much as 115 people. That's a big body to feed. For comparison, the African bush elephant weighs about 5.5 tons, or about 30% less than the Colombian mammoth. People often confuse woolly mammoths with mastodons, and no wonder. They look a lot alike, and both lived in the Americas. But they actually evolved separately from a common elephant ancestor that may have been similar to the smaller Asian elephant. So there were many different kinds of mammoths and mastodons. Mastodons were smaller than mammoths, but about 9 feet tall. And similar to the woolly mammoth, had a very thick coat of hair. Both were browsers, which means they ate fruits and vegetables off the ground and from trees. And we know this because of the cone-like shape of their teeth. Speaking of teeth, check out these canines. The saber-toothed cat was bigger and stronger than any cat alive today. Smilodon, the biggest saber-toothed cat, weighed 800 pounds, about 30% more than a tiger. Its head would have come up to your shoulder, and it lived as recently as 10,000 years ago, when humans were migrating throughout North America. The two almost certainly clashed, but what was the saber-toothed cat's best weapon for hunting? Its long teeth, prehensile tail, night vision, or strong front legs. Here's your clue. You're probably tempted to say long teeth, but that wasn't as important as one of the cat's other impressive features. Strong front legs. Its saber-like teeth were too fragile for an initial attack. Plus, the cats didn't have the jaw strength to attack with them directly. Instead, the cat used its strong legs and weight to pounce on and hold down prey. Then it would use its teeth to pierce an animal's soft neck. Now, let's take a look at the short-faced bear, a gigantic predator that roamed the Americas for close to 3 million years before going extinct about 11,000 years ago. It was bigger than any bear alive today, 
and is possibly the largest carnivorous mammal ever. Bigger even than the enormous polar bear. About how much did the largest short-faced bear weigh? 800 pounds, 1,000 pounds, 1,500 pounds, or 2,100 pounds? Here's your clue. It's most closely related to the spectacled bear, which weighs at most 450 pounds. But the short-faced bear was over four times as large. Do the math, and it adds up to about 2,100 pounds. This massive bear was so big, it could rear up over 15 feet in the air. But how it hunted is still a mystery. Some scientists think it used its incredible size to overwhelm prey. Others say it sniffed out a fresh kill from another predator and simply walked over and took it using its size for intimidation. What a bully. Coming up next, we'll meet some more prehistoric giants. Plus, we'll come face to face with one of the most dangerous pack hunters ever. But first, let's see if you can guess this tree-hugging mystery animal. Stay tuned, the answer coming up when we return to Zoo Clues. We're back, time to reveal our mystery animal. Do you think you know what it is? Pull back and... It's a tree sloth, a very distant relative of a much, much bigger species of sloth that lived in the Americas over 10,000 years ago, Megatherium. It dwarfed almost every other creature. And unlike the sloths we know today, it wasn't nearly as slow. Scientists have pieced together Megatherium's fossilized bones to discover its true size. 20 feet long from nose to tail, and it weighed far more than a ton. So why did sloths become so small? Scientists think there have always been small sloths. It's just that the bigger ones went extinct, and the smaller ones, maybe by virtue of their size, survived. When you weigh just 10 pounds, it's much easier to hide and find enough food. But the megatherium probably needed over 100 pounds of vegetation a day. So if the climate changed and food became harder to find, megatherium couldn't survive. Giant herbivores like megatherium were called megafauna, meaning giant animals. And the biggest among them, Indricotherium, stood 16 feet at the shoulders and weighed about 26,000 pounds. Way bigger than the biggest woolly mammoth. But Indricotherium never lived in the Americas. Although plenty of other megafauna did, including mastodons, some mammoth species, and our friend megatherium. All of these large plant eaters roamed the continent with almost nothing to fear. Almost. They would certainly have kept an eye out for saber-toothed cats, short-nosed bears, and one other terrifying predator. Which prehistoric predator from the Americas hunted in groups? Andrew Sarkis, Megistotherium, or the dire wolf? Here are some clues. Andrew Sarkis was an enormous dog-like predator, almost as big as the short-nosed bear. Megastotherium was a similarly sized super predator that hunted mastodons. But neither Megastotherium nor Andrew Sarkis lived in the Americas, and both may have hunted alone. The answer is the dire wolf. Dire wolves are distant relatives of the gray wolves that exist today, which roam forests from the United States to Russia and China. But the dire wolf was slightly bigger than the gray wolf. It had a stockier bill and was much more muscular. It had to be to prey on the large land mammals of the time, and it also hunted in groups. Dire wolves had incredibly powerful jaws that bit with twice the force of a regular wolf. But their extreme muscularity made them slower than the gray wolves of today, and this difference eventually cost them. When the megafauna began to die out, the dire wolf couldn't catch the smaller prey and went extinct. Now, let's investigate a giant prehistoric animal that took to the skies in search of food. The pterotorns were some of the largest birds ever to live on Earth. They're not around anymore, of course, but one of their closest relatives is... Which bird is closely related to the ancient pteratorn? The California condor, the red-tailed hawk, or the spotted owl? Here's a clue. If the pteratorns were huge, wouldn't you expect their ancestors to be too? Yep, the answer is the California condor, the largest living bird in North America. 
Its wingspan can be almost four feet long, but that was peanuts compared to their forebears, the pteratorns. They had wingspans of up to 20 feet, and their beaks were long and sharp, perfect for hunting. They gulped down animals the size of rabbits in one bite, but they had to eat a lot of food so they probably scavenged the carcasses of mastodons and other giant animals. But when the megafauna died out over 10,000 years ago, so did the pteratorns. Lots of animals living today had larger ancestors that have died out. The giant sloth is just one example. Which small animal had an ancestor as big as a car? The armadillo, the possum, or the beaver? Here's your clue. Although the possum has been around for over 70 million years, it was never very big, and there were prehistoric beavers, but none were nearly as big as a car. The answer is the armadillo. Imagine this little guy, supersized. Presto, the Daedicarus weighed up to 5,000 pounds. It could be nearly as tall as a person, but it was an herbivore and may have been hunted by humans. The biggest armadillo species alive today is the giant armadillo. Not too giant compared to the Daedicarus, but it dwarfs most armadillos, weighing in at well over a hundred pounds. Our next huge prehistoric American animal, Stupendimus, lived in the freshwater lakes and streams of South America. What kind of animal was Stupendimus? A crocodile, a turtle, or a lizard? Here's your clue. Its relatives are one of the longest living creatures on Earth. Stupendimus was a two-ton, 10-foot-long turtle. It dwarfed the famous Galapagos turtle, and its relative, the Aldabra tortoise, can live up to 200 years. That makes the crocodile's lifespan of 70 years seem like a blip, not to mention our own lifespan. Long ago, giant tortoises roamed almost every continent, especially the Americas. But why did turtles, let alone mastodons, sloths, armadillos, and other plant eaters grow so big? Their living relatives aren't nearly as gigantic. The answer is that before humans, food was plentiful and the biggest animals were so big that they had no need to hide themselves because it would take a lot for a top-level predator like Smilodon to try and eat a huge plant eater like Stupendimus or Daedicarus. For millions of years, the advantages of being big outweigh the cost. Coming up next, we'll take a look at some more enormous prehistoric animals. But first, it's time to identify another mystery animal. When this animal is scared, it smacks its tail on the water to warn its friends. Don't go away, the answer coming up next on Zoo Clues. We're back, time to reveal our mystery animal. Do you think you know the answer? It's a beaver, and like many of the other animals we've investigated, the beaver had a gigantic counterpart that lived about 10,000 years ago. Castoroides, which is just another name for giant beaver. They were about eight feet long and weighed over 200 pounds. Today, beavers tip the scales at about 40 pounds. No one is sure if Castoroides built giant dams, but they did build dome structures called lodges to live in. Despite their smaller size, today's American beaver plays a huge role in its neighborhood. When a beaver creates a dam, the river behind it floods, creating a wetland habitat that draws new species to the area. So this little guy has a lot of influence over the environment. He's one of nature's earliest developers. Pretty impressive for a three-foot rodent. The beaver isn't the only little animal with a big bite. The snapping turtle bites to catch its lunch and to protect itself. And it owes a lot of its success to the beaver. Areas with beaver dams have many times the turtle population of areas without. The American beaver was one of the animals that drew Europeans to settle in North America. The fur trade drew European explorers deep into what are now the United States and Canada. But there's one other American species that is every bit as important as the beaver, and which has been on the continent for hundreds of thousands of years, the bison. Right before humans came to North America, how many bison lived there? One million, 
5 million, 10 million, or 50 million. Here's a clue. They live from northern Canada all the way to Mexico and as far east as the Atlantic Ocean. A huge range, and they had a huge impact on the environment. The answer is 50 million. The bison was well adapted to several different climates. Bison were megafauna, just like the mastodon, and they benefited from the abundance of plant life in North America. Their enormous herds helped them defend against predators. Wherever they roamed, they changed things. They would often prefer one grass over another, which would sometimes change which plant species was dominant in the area. And that would affect which animals lived there too. Now let's take a closer look at an animal that lived very close to the bison. Before Europeans arrived, which animal lived where bison grazed? The wild horse, the muskrat, or the prairie dog? Here's a clue. The muskrat lives in and around water. And before Europeans arrived, there were no horses in the Americas. The answer is the prairie dog. Prairie dogs have a hard time building homes in areas with super thick grasses. So when a herd of bison passed through an area and gave it a haircut, the prairie dogs quickly moved in. All they had to do was keep the grass trimmed. But as they did, the grass grew faster in order to reproduce as quickly as possible. It didn't want to get eaten before it had a chance to seed. And it turns out that grasses that grow faster are usually much richer in nutrients. Extra nutrient-rich grasses brought more species of animals to the area in search of a meal, including deer and elk. And all of this simply because a herd of bison passed through and ate a bunch of grass. And there were so many bison grazing that the populations of prairie dogs, deer, elk, and lots of other animals soared. Now let's investigate one last species of animals that lived in the Americas before humans. It's similar to the prairie dog and has an interesting ancestor. Which rodent had an ancestor with horns growing out of its nose? The rat, the beaver, the gopher, or the rabbit? Here's your clue. Rabbits aren't rodents, even though they look like they should be. The answer is the gopher. Believe it or not, there was once a horned gopher that lived on the Great Plains of North America. It was only about a foot long, making it the smallest horned mammal that's ever existed. The horned gopher used its horns primarily for self-defense, giving the gopher a chance to run to the safety of its burrow. Unfortunately, all of these horned gophers went extinct right around the same time humans made an appearance on the continent about 15,000 years ago. And now it's time to identify another mystery animal. Can you guess which mammal these feet belong to? Stay tuned, the answer coming up when we return to Zoo Clues. We're back, time to reveal our mystery animal. Did you figure it out? These feet belong to a camel. These two-toed animals have soft padded toes, not hooves. And although we may think of them as desert travelers in Northern Africa and Asia, camels actually evolved in the Americas about 50 million years ago. During one of the ice ages, they crossed over the land bridge to Asia. But then the ice melted and the camels in North America died out. But the ones that crossed over into Asia diversified and survived. Besides climate change, what caused the mass extinction of megafauna in the Americas about 10,000 years ago? Most scientists point the finger at an early American group of humans called the Clovis. These hunters survived off the meat of mastodons, woolly mammoths, giant sloths, giant beavers, gargantuan armadillos, and the huge ancestors of the American bison. These megafauna had never had to defend themselves against predators as lethal and widespread as humans. And so the megafauna died out. But many of their smaller ancestors survive today. And humans, who are much smarter now about how the environment works, are doing what they can to help today's animals survive and thrive. Now it's time for Animal Oddities, where we bring you the most unique, strange, and amazing animals from all around the world. Today's animal oddity is the rattlesnake, or more specifically, the rattling part. 
We all know that rattlesnakes shake their rattle to warn off predators. It's the rattlesnake's way of stopping a fight before it even gets started. Avoiding a fight is one of the best ways to stay alive in nature. But with such powerful venom, why would a rattlesnake need to avoid a fight? Let's investigate. In nature, animals are usually highly adapted to hunting in a specific way. For the rattlesnake, it attacks prey with its teeth and injects its deadly venom to kill it. And rattlesnakes have to be careful not to injure their fangs. Without them, they couldn't hunt. That's why the rattlesnake only fights when it absolutely has to. Its rattle evolved as a way to warn predators of its dangerous venom and try to prevent a fight before it starts. As a rattlesnake grows, it sheds its skin and a new section of rattle is left behind. Each rattle is made of hard keratin and vibrates when the entire stack is shaken. As a snake ages, its rattle becomes louder and more prominent. And just as they protect their teeth, rattlesnakes also protect their rattles, so they often slither with their tails held in the air. Rattlesnakes have been around for millions of years, so clearly this warning system works. Now here's one more animal oddity, the mountain beaver. The mountain beaver is a rodent native to North America that evolved in the Northwest forests of the United States. It doesn't get much larger than two feet, but it's a very important species. You see, mountain beavers build very elaborate underground tunnel networks called burrows. These burrows can be quite sophisticated because they make separate rooms for storing food and waste and even special sleeping areas. Mountain beavers, though small in size, can have an enormous impact on the environment around them. How do they do that? Basically, by getting up and moving out. When mountain beavers move to a different area, the burrow system they leave behind can be used by many other species, like rabbits, skunks, snakes, and pretty much anything else that needs a home. This is why mountain beavers are sometimes considered a keystone species. Every time they abandon a burrow, it's like leaving behind a brand new ecosystem for someone else. That's pretty amazing. Well, we're out of time again, but we'll be back next week with more brain-busting animal questions and their amazing answers on Zoo Clues. See you then!